which I suppose is uh, to, to the direction of the point you're making. Uh, I do. I, I acknowledge your point, um, but I, but on 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 balance, I've just seen so much. I just see so many problems with the three year, uh, and I and I sense that there's a lack of courage by by governments to address it because they're worried that um, people would would see it as just wanting to entrench that their power, the government's power. Yeah, and by the way, can, can I just make a, a point here? I mean, th these are some really great questions that are coming up to me, and, and I'm not a I'm not claiming to be a lecturer in political science at the university and, and to know all this, the science behind this. I'm talking more as just a, a practitioner, someone who's in the parliament who's living this stuff um, and, and surviving it as best I can, and 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 that's sort of informing my response to these questions. Okay, one more, or else the pubs will be closed. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I was in the Liberal Party many years ago. I was in the Young Liberals um, in the 1980s. Um, but then I was sort of maturing politically um, and, I, and I reached a stage in my life uh, when I resigned over the Iraq War in 2003 um, and I decided to become politically active and I decided that the Greens, and I was in New South Wales at the time, I decided the Greens were the best match for me politically. Um, and I joined the Greens, ran for the Greens up there, moved down here, ran for the Greens down here. Um, I left the Greens in early 2008, uh, and I'll be upfront about this, uh, for party political reasons, um, not for ideological reasons. As I said earlier, I was um, at the moderate end of the party, which I think politically is about centre, um, which is an interesting old place to be on the spectrum, because I think, I think there's an overlap around the middle of the spectrum between the, the moderate end of the Greens uh, the Labor left, um, the old wet Liberals and, and the Democrats, there's all sorts of things muddled up in the middle there where I am, um, which helps to explain, I think, why I have fairly broad appeal politically. Um, but I left the Greens because of party political reasons. Um, I felt I was not being accommodated or supported in the party, um, so much so that in the 2007 federal election I had to run virtually my own campaign. Um, I decided I didn't need to put up with that, those sorts of challenges, so I left the party in early 2008. Um, and, and I'm quite happy with, with, with where, where I'm at now. Um, I, I think I can be, and I think I am being more effective as an independent, um, because I can sort of appeal and represent people across a broader a spectrum. I think it's an opportunity loss for the Greens, because if the Greens and I had stayed together, I could have perhaps brought those people to the Greens. Do you think that maybe as a result of that, um, that's maybe what other people who um, they have the same politics as you feel as well, so they don't end up running for parties as well, so we miss out on that old town pool as a result? Um, look, I think there are a lot of good people out there um, who are not getting involved in politics because they, they, they'd like to be involved in politics, but they're not, they don't, they're not attracted to party politics or there's no party that it particularly suits them. And unfortunately, our political system is a party-based system. Um, it, is, it is almost impossible to be elected uh, to the federal parliament, uh, either house, um, or to the lower house here as an independent. It is, it is a very, very um, rare thing to do. The fact that I got within 315 votes last year for the state election, I'm hoping, now some people would say that proved you can't be elected to the lower house. I'm hope, actually hoping it proved that you can be, uh, and I'm hoping that there's some good independently minded people out there who might have a go, um, having seen how close I got. And really it was just a bad throw of the dice on the last cut of the preferences. Um, but it is exceptionally hard um, to succeed politically in Australia as an independent, and I would support any political reform that made it easier for independence. To get into uh, to get into parliament, uh, remembering I'm actually the only independent in the federal parliament in both houses um, that didn't come through a state parliament first, um, which 
sort of singles out just what, what an odd result it was in Denison last year. Okay, we, we do have a... Uh, oh, what about Jane? Jane? Jane's been dying to ask a question. Oh, sorry, Jane. Could you, uh, is it too soon to ask you, Andrew, whether you will run for the second term? Uh, my intention is to stand again. Um, hopefully in late 2003, I, I, and I want to do everything I can to make this parliament go full term. Certainly it's in the interest of all of the, the four key crossbenchers that it goes full term. Um, and my intention at this stage is to recontest it, um, and I think I can win it. Um, that, was, that was heartening, thank you. Um, I mean, you know, it depends on so many things. I'll tell you, it's hard on families. Very, very. I've got a three-year-old and a four-and-a-half-year-old, two little girls. It's hard. Um, but they're, they're right behind me still. And um, so I'll keep trying. Particularly, I want to be there when these reforms are actually introduced in 2014. Andrew, that was absolutely fantastic. It was almost an old-style political meeting where people come along and they listen to somebody and engage with that person. Would you thank Andrew for this? Pickers Tasmanian of the Year. This is uh, sponsored by uh, Pete and Di Henning of Lentara Grove, which produces award-winning olive oil in the beautiful uh, Tama Valley. Uh, we've had uh, Dr Alison Bleeney and Dr Frank Nicholson as our Tasmanians of the Year, and they've been given this uh, something similar to that. This year we have chosen John Lawrence, whom probably nobody's ever heard of. But he, he writes regularly and forensically on TasmanianTimes.com. He's not here. I've arranged to meet him at Grape uh, in a couple of weeks where, if he gives me some Heathcote Shiraz, he will get this. <laughs> <laughs> now, he describes cryptically as having been employed as an economist for five years before returning to Tasmania where working life has been spent as an accountant in public practice. There's nothing cryptic about his writing. He interprets for the unwashed and unschooled the arcane and complex financial statements of opaque organisations like Guns Limited and Forestry Tasmania and unravels the bankruptcy of managed investment schemes. We are event... Well, I'm immensely grateful to John. He makes sense to me. Now, as you file out, James is going to tell you about a band that we are hoping to get to Falls. Little Bear, and where's Little Bear's wondrous creative person? There they are. <laughs> Good evening, or as they say in France, Bon Jovi. <laughs> Speaking of music, we all need the occasional escape from pulp mills, pokies and politics. And music is for many that escape. I'm up here very quickly to tell you about Tasmanian Times' attempt to get local band Little Bear a paid gig alongside international and national bands at this year's Falls Festival. It was the music of Little Bear you may have heard on your way in and you will hear again on your way out. Little Bear is a six-piece ensemble melding electric and acoustic in a diverse sound that draws on jazz, blues, country, ambient and rock influences with exotic folk overtones. Lisa Haynes, reviewing Little Bear's self-titled EP, said, Little Bear's self-titled ET is lyrically intricate with dark and mysterious imagery and intimate storylines that are all too imaginative to tell. 
The opening track, Lily, is exotic and sultry, set in a European folk scene, the lone piano accordion. Jill and Tom, a song that is, bears its soul with poetic lyrics floating on the brushed snare and electric cello bass lines. On Tasmanian Times over October, we'll be plugging Little Bear. At the moment, you can listen to two of their tracks. The Architect Sank is one of them, and Gloomy Sunday is the other. You can read about the band. There will be a photo essay coming up soon. We will tell you about several gigs coming up in the next couple months, and there may even be a few surprises. Thanks for listening. Thanks to Andrew. Congratulations to John Lawrence, and have a good night. Thank you very much for coming. It's really wonderful that you guys turned out on such a dismal evening. Now it's time for noppies. Thank you.